Long, long ago, in the age of centralization, the land of Nchietu suffered quietly under the yoke of a tyrannical central government. The far-flung provinces of Ule and Zamunda gave their taxes and dues, collected without fail. They were promised development, infrastructure. They waited, and waited, and waited, but nothing ever came. Meanwhile, in the capital city, the central government was busy developing the city, overdeveloped it through wild parties, and soon they ran out of money. It was time to collect again. It was not sustainable. One day, a child dared remind the king about a promise he had made. It was a mistake. And the people in the provinces realized that their suggestions were not welcome, but their money was. People from Kule and Zamunda and soon even Hapa marched to the capital to demand a better method. And the government had no choice. Devolution had come to Nchietu. A great forum was called. In every little village hall and church loan, People met finally to discuss what was at the heart of the matter. How national resources were shared. How much were the provinces of Hapa, Kule, and Zamunda were going to get under the devolved system? But it was not as easy a decision as they thought. When we set out to do this, I think one of the main goals that we wanted to bring out is that people can actually discuss a lot of these things that we think is only, uh, can only be done by budget experts and economists. Uh, because local people in different areas across the country understand the place where they live. They have a real understanding of the kind of services they need and the kind of services that they currently have. So we looked at data from the health sector, we looked at data from the agriculture sector, we looked at information on the revenues that counties actually collect from property taxes and from uh, other sources of own revenue, and we tried to put that together and manipulated it a bit so that it wasn't recognizably any county, but that it was similar to what some counties actually, the conditions in certain counties. And then we asked people to uh, think about how they would share those resources. And so for that purpose, we took them through the current formula and made sure that they understood very clearly how the decisions were made in the current formula to share resources. Then with that background, we asked them, okay, now you're in the driver's seat. Here's the 10 billion shillings. Here are the three counties, Hapa, Kule, and Zamunda. How do you want to share these resources in a way that you can justify? Na sioni kama sisi ndo tutakao wagawania ile pesa wao vile watakavyotumia hapa. Tutawaganya ile ratio wanaweza kutumia county hii. Hii kama ni 3 m point what hivyo. Do we have this to make to we've gone through this formula. Tumeona vile wamekuwa ki waki divide now. Na do we do we like this? No. Eh hizi mifano tumepewa nadhani ndio tutaangalia. Kwa hizi county tatu tuangalie hizi mifano ndio tugawanye pesa kulingana na hizi mifano kama hawangetaka tufuate mifano wangetuambia milioni kumi hiyo kagawanyeni kwa kaunti tatu na do we do we like this no we do not like this kuni mfano tumetoa na 29 mfano sasa tukienda tukiacha hizi mifano tutaweka wapi hiyo pesa you know i think what happened as we as we watch people have this uh, go through this exercise is that um, the first thing that happened in most places is that people were confused and uh, very challenged by this data not sure what to do with this data not entirely comfortable with the data um, generally um, when you you tell people that they're going to be doing something that involves numbers and involves math they get a little bit frightened they're not really sure what to do and i think that happened almost everywhere if this was a gift, then that would be fair. Because you say whoever well, is giving the gift has distributed it equally.
Yes. 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 Eh? You want us to go by number of health facilities or incidents of disease? I would like us to go in the population. Consideration of the well, I think it was interesting first to see uh, the surprise on people when they realized that they could actually make sense of numbers. And thinking about the data that we had uh, put together and how people interpreted it was also quite interesting. We shouldn't, we shouldn't do it to give population a higher number. Because looking at Kube, which has the highest percentage of people who are infected, the number of health facilities in Kube is 162. So if we give them money, uh, and, and they start building other health facilities. Why? Zamunda has uh, the lowest population and number of facilities in Kidogo. Yet they have the, the number of uh, TB incidences, malaria incidences is the highest. Um, looking at people, giving them, giving population a higher amount, I'm not for that. Two of the parameters that were quite surprising for people was the parameter that is used for population and of course the parameter of poverty. Because how those parameters are measured was very different from how people thought those two work. Uh, for example, when thinking about population is that it's based on the ratio that what is the share of the population of one county in relation to the whole population in the country. Honestly, I can assure you that I'm not really so much of this. <laughs> I am thoroughly lost. Me, I'm lost. Let me just say. Because I, I have a feeling that we are lost. How do we interpret this data? And they often, they quickly looked uh, at how to group the data in ways to make it easier to use and how to relate it back to the three principles of uh, need, capacity, and effort. I think we're Wherever we went around the country, the first thing that people were able to identify was the importance of needs. Almost every, in every forum, in every discussion, people quickly went to the idea that people that have different needs should be treated differently. They shouldn't be given uh, the same amounts, or the, the same amount of resources. People who uh, need more should get more. I think that principle was the easiest for people to understand and uh, they came to it without us even having to prompt them. My friends and gentlemen, ladies, we found a marginalized society, a society that is dying, a society with a crisis. They had, a, they had serious health issues. HIV was rampant, malaria was rampant. They had no infrastructure despite their huge numbers. They had no food and they had no business. The, 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 the paved roads in Zamunda is one kilometer. Yet in Kula, that has the highest population, is 15 kilometers. This is almost half of the population who are taken to hospital due to malaria. Almost the entire population are sick. It's an epidemic. So population in itself cannot help. It is the need of that population. If we, if we improve the health of these people, right, then they'll be able to take part into these other components of development. Therefore, we say let's allocate more money there. If you look at Kule, Kule could have 162 now uh, health facilities, and though the population of the uh, now the incidents uh, incidences are high, so you 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 realize that Kule will require the services. No, the provision of services and not the construction of the new facilities. So, that being the case, you, might, you will find that Zamunda will require more allocation than, than Kule despite the high incidences because construction and equipping will be higher than, than, will, will be higher than the provision of the services. You have to kind of look at it carefully and see, well, this county, Zamunda, is actually sicker and poorer in different ways, but the number of people that live there that need services is much lower than the number of sick and poor people in Kule, even though Kule is on balance, not as sick. But because that population is so large, the number of people that need services is much higher. So we, we, we kind of gave that to people, and I think people had a challenge in figuring that out, but they also confronted it, and a number of people, I think, started to understand 
This was the same issue when we compared Isiolo and Turkana. Kwa nini Turkana ambaye ni similar mambo ya Turkana na Isiolo county ni similar. Mambo ya Masabit ni similar. Mambo ya Mandera kuda ni, ni, ni similar. Ni kwa nini wanapatiwa billions and billions na tuko katika masingara moja. We are all pastoralists. Ni kwa nini wanapatiwa more adaptation than us. Well, I think the most interesting one was one we had in Isiolo, uh, where there was a big argument as to why wards that are counties that were as poor as Isiolo seem to be getting a lot more billions than Isiolo was getting. And the argument that was made, which was very rational, if you ask me, was why are we as poor as they are and we are not getting as much as they are getting? A lot of people thought it's based on the poverty index across the counties, but in the real sense it's based on the actual number of poor people that live in a certain county as a share of all the poor people that live uh, in the whole country. So people understanding this, you could see the surprise, but at the same time you could see a lot of the light bulbs going on and people could now understand how some of these parameters work. The other principles are more challenging. I think that people have a difficult time discriminating between capacity and effort and part of that is related to the language that we use because we, we use capacity in a lot of different ways. I assume it's a challenge to separate capacity and effort uh, because sometimes we cannot, uh, we cannot do anything about a natural uh, cause. Sometimes people happen to, we are in Taita Taveta. We have been bestowed with a lot of minerals, a lot of water bodies, chala, Mzima Spring. You cannot do it. We have nothing to do about it. You cannot transform Zima Spring to Makweni County. 62% of the Taveta is a national bank. Land is the primary factor of production. So if a county does not have 62% of its land primary resource of production, then there should be another factor that would compensate. So when you talk of capacity, and I, and I don't have ile nafasi ya exercise my capacity, <coughs> inakuwa shida. So there are some injustices, lazima ziwe rectified kwanza, ndio tuje kwa hiyo hali ya capacity na effort. Um, people often talk about capacity as ability. But I think the way that we think about capacity when we're talking about resource sharing is about the, the resources that we're able to generate on our own. Um, how much do we have? What is our endowment? And that is what we call fiscal capacity. And it's a different concept from the way capacity is often used when we talk about building people's capacity and trainings or whatever. It uh, often overlaps with people's understanding of effort, which is, of course, how much uh, is, is, is more about the choices that people make, whereas capacity is not always something that you can choose. You may have an endowment of natural resources in your county. You didn't choose to have that. You're just lucky to have that. But the way that you use the resources that you get is a measure of your effort. Looking at HAPA, it has the ability to generate more revenue than the others, simply because, yes, because on revenue, that is, eh? through single business permits and property rates. Eh? And if you look at Kule in agriculture, mm -hmm. like 69 percent are able to do farming. But when it comes to the county itself, mm -hmm. trying to raise revenues, mm -hmm. I mean the agriculture thing tells you like they have the capacity. Mm -hmm. most, most of the population are well. They can raise, they can pay their fees and things like that. You know you have to uplift when I'm going to wana generating dog by through capacity building their capacity of mm -hmm. In so in your know. thinking, the way you're thinking, come yeah. at this county, yes. we should, if we are locating money just basically on that thinking alone, yes. ni, uh, give more to those with less capacity. Uh, yes, no, to, yeah, for them to uh, watch uh -huh. Yes. What do so, we think about that? Yeah. Those counties become potential because other counties are being maintenance. So we, I, I, I don't think, I don't see the reason why we should reward. Like we are giving you more because you're generating more. You're generating more because my county was suffering by the time you were developed. And you need to bring me up to that level so that we think about now, can we share it? So it means in essence that those with greater capacity now should get less, so that those with less capacity can get more for them to strike a balance with trying to take affirmative action kind of. Okay. The confusion was that people would say, well, in certain parts of the country people are more capable of doing things for themselves and that 
overlaps with an idea about productivity, that areas that are more productive should receive more. But of course, one of the reasons why we've shifted from the old way of doing things to the new way of doing things is that what we saw before is that we did put resources in certain parts of the country, but everybody didn't benefit. And so I think one of the things that we think we're thinking today when we think about fairness is that we want to make sure that everybody is going to have a chance to benefit. 89% of the households in Kule are actually doing the crop farming. Crop farming. Yeah. So at least each house in Kule, yeah. at least 89% of the households. Because if you're saying they have more population, they're actually engaging in economic activities. Yeah. They have yeah. the effort. Like if you look at the effort, you yeah. bring in more, you get more. We should reward them based on their work. Kule does not bring more. Mm. Hapa brings in more than Kule. Look at the single, single, single business, business permits, uh, property okay. rates. Apart from Kule, uh, like change in per capita collection, mm. yeah? they are negative. They were able to collect 900 million, now they, they think they are going to be collecting 400 million. Is that what we should reward? So who are we giving the motisha to? The people who are actually uh, doing the work or the people who should be doing the work and are not really doing the work? The Buddha has the ones who are doing more, they'll be supported. Yes. The ones who are going down, they'll be. Please uplift them. No. No, 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 uplift them. Counties that have loopholes in their revenue collection should not be rewarded. Look at this. Because they cannot, that's where now we miss what we call equality. It cannot be found there. Kuna counties zingine zinaonekana hazina effort lakini ukichunguza sana utakuta kwamba hawana nafasi hata ya exercise that effort. I think uh, it's important for people to understand that the data we were giving people with respect to effort was how much revenue was the county able to collect from key sources property rates and business permits a couple years ago and how much are they able to collect today? And the difference between what they were able to collect before and what they're able to collect today takes out kind of the overall level of development of that place and focuses more on the change, right? So a place that is able to collect more uh, because it just has a lot of economic activity going on, a very rich county, they're going to have a high level of collection in both years. But whether that collection is going up, whether it's going down by how much it's going up, that's the measure of effort. It's not so much about adding up and calculating numbers, but it's finding meaning in the number and using that to decide what is fair when you're sharing revenue among you know, different regions, whether it's wards, whether it's counties. And so, while well, the data was a shock at the beginning, but at the end of it, people appreciated the importance of using data to understand the context of the different regions. We are giving or uh, sharing the revenue among the wards in our county. This is an example. Then we're supposed to put into consideration population size of the wards, and in unit wards, we're supposed to put into consideration poverty in the parameters or index in each of the wards, and also vastness of the wards. And actually that's what should apply, and that's what applies uh, nationally. It's long overdue, not necessarily even after the devolution, but it should have been done even before the government. People should be aware to know what is their budget, what they need. After all, they're the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. They should know how spend their money and they should be told this is how it's been used and also to give their priorities as to how money should be used in the counties or in the entire government. Kuli ni kwamba watu hawajui wale wanajua ni hawa wachache wako hapa kwenye county. Lakini kule chini ya njani watu hawajui budget, hawaelewi inaenda namna gani, hawajui ni nini wametengewa kina mama ama watoto ama youth ama disability hawaelewi. Kwa hivyo hata tumeshukuru kwa ajili ya hii event tukitoka hapa tuhakikishe kila mwananchi amejua hipe hi budget imemfikia namna gani imemhusu je anaelimishwa vile anaweza kwenda na kutafuta haki yake katika hii budget we need to like now go back to the community to enlighten them more on maybe budget tracking therefore overall sharing the the 10 billion zamuda get more, followed by Kule, then it happened. We were unable to come up with figures because of the, all the time we were given, we are working through the figures and analyzing. 
the situation of which county. Thank you. It was always a mixed picture. The approach was quite different in terms of how people uh, interpreted the data and how eventually they actually went about sharing the revenue. So I can't tell you which county got more and which county got less. All I can tell you is that people had reasons as to why they gave money to what ward or to what county, which is the main goal of this, is that we should always have reasons as to why we are making certain decisions. This formula was not developed only to serve the interests of certain people, but we were trying to create a formula. We may not have succeeded, but we were trying to create a formula that was fair, that would give people resources based on what they need. And that as we revise that formula, that we can make it more fair, but that it isn't just about what I'm going to get from this formula, and that people are capable of having that conversation, that we're not restricted to a democracy in which we're just constantly talking about what, what's in it for me, what I can get out of it, but we're also talking about what's good for the country. It's very possible to have this kind of discussion, even at the national level, and also even when we're discussing the budgets at the county level, on what to share between the different wards. It's very possible to have this same kind of discussion, but we need to make sure that people have the information and we explain the decision as to why we are using or giving them certain information to discuss. So it's very possible to do it. The fate of Nchietu was at stake. No longer will the people of Nchietu sit back and allow the central government to make all the decisions for them. They would exercise their rights fully from that day and make sure that their concerns were noted by their leaders. A new tide was turning in Inchietu. What will come of it?